Charles, CG Marine, Boat Building Repair Company in North Wales. Let's get into it. And video. What is this video going to be about? That's the question. Uh, working pressure of a boat is important. It's one of the most important things about owning a rib. So what does this mean? Well, basic terms that if you're not at the right pressure with the rib in the tubes, you will cause problems and damage and make an issue for yourself in the long run. So, working pressure of a boat. You can find this thing on the CE plate on the back of your boat, usually on the transom, sometimes on the back console. Sometimes you'll have it on the steering console, but very rarely. So, I'll put a picture up of what a CE plate looks like and what you're looking for on that for your working pressure. You'll tend to have a, two numbers on those, like 0 0.2 bar or 0 0.25 bar, something like that. So your working pressure range, so you don't want to be below it, you don't want to be over it. So, there, that is the sweet spot to be at, okay? What happens if you're under pressure? Lots of problems. The main issue you get is cracking along the back end of your cone. It's on the underside of the tube, on the sponsor. This is a big issue because you get one chance to fix it and that's it. You know, if it goes again after that, it's gonna be a retube or a complete new section to put onto the boat, which in turn is just easier to retube your boat. So what are the signs for the damage you've got there? You could have cracking on there, PVC cracks very easily if it gets below what you should be when you're on the water because PVC ripples really quickly because it's plastic. It work hardens and becomes a hard bit of plastic and then cracks and lets air out. Hypalon, it's a tougher material because it's a rubber, not a plastic. But what will happen with the Hypalon is it'll ripple so quick that the, the weave in the middle will start to crack and cause blisters and then, then blisters blow out and you get a hole through your tube. The blisters on Hypalon is a bit more difficult to fix as well because it blows the Hypalon off the weave. So if the, if the weave is exposed, it's very difficult to have anything glue back to it. You can sort of prime it with using the glue, just you put, you put, put the Hypalon glue onto it and then let it cure, let it set and then go back to it the next day and then glue a patch onto the top of it and hopefully you'll get a better bond, but it doesn't always happen that way best thing you can do is keep the working pressure correct. So doing this, very easy really, if you get an electric pump they tend to have a dial on them that shows you the pressure on the, on the gauge and usually LEDs or something like that and then they most of the time have a, a pressure stop as well so when you know what your working pressure is you can just set it to it, it'll pump it to it and then you're good to go. So working pressure can be achieved by using an electric pump keep between the working pressure guidelines of the boat. Each boat is different. You'll find that on your CE plates. And number three, another one actually is, if you're pumping your boat up in warm weather, outside in the air, you're gonna have a higher pressure on land. If you go launching your boat after you've pumped it up and put it into the working pressure, you'll deflate your tubes because the water temperature is much colder than the air temperature which will deflate your tube. So you should really pump your tubes back up when you've been on the water for 10, 15 minutes because you're gonna lose air from the from the back end, usually the back end is because the back end is just the water, the fronts don't do that much, it's still in the air mostly. So that is a big thing as well. If a lot of people don't realize it either, is that cold water hitting your tubes is gonna deflate them, especially if you've pumped them up in warm air. So always make sure you, you keep an eye on your working pressure. You don't have to do it too much after you've done all the steps to make the boat right. So pump it up in the air, pressure's fine, put it in the water, check it again after 10, 15 minutes. If it's gone down, pump it back up to the right working pressure, otherwise you're gonna have the, the issue with it. You can put it at the minimum working pressure, that's not a problem. You, if your minimum working pressure is 0.2 bar, then when you lift it back out of the water again and it goes back into the warm air, you're gonna have a good 20% buffer to be able to, for the tubes not to be overinflated and burst. So you should be fine on that side of stuff. It's better to have pressure release valves if you've got them. If you don't have them, then just um, getting them fitted. They're not particularly expensive to put in. They're just fiddly to try and get into the tubes without cutting too big of a hole. So yeah, it's very important to have your working pressure right. And, just make sure you've got it in the right place and you'll have a boat that'll last you years. So, here we go.